Yeah, but thank you very much for the invitation, Fatou. So I'm going to talk about uh, multiple zeta values. Um, so to define them, let me take a set of integers n1 up to nr minus 1, which are greater than or equal to 1. And let nr be an integer greater than or equal to 2. And then the uh, multiple zeta value, zeta of n1 up to nr, is defined by the following nested sum, 0 less than k1 less than kr of 1 over k1 to the n1 up to kr to the nr. And because of the assumption on, on nr being greater than 2, this sum converges and defines a real number. And there are two important quantities um, uh, in relation to multiple zeta values, which I need to consider. The first is the weight, which is the sum of all the indices, and the depth is the integer r. And so these things uh, were first uh, introduced by Euler, I believe, certainly in the case when, when r equals 2. And rediscovered many times since by physicists and mathematicians alike. And the first thing one notices is that these numbers satisfy very many relations. Um, perhaps the best known of these uh, is due to Euler, and who showed that zeta of 2n um, is some explicit, but I won't write it down, some explicit multiple of pi to the 2n by some rational number. And another relation due to Euler is that zeta m times zeta n is equal to zeta of m comma n plus zeta of n comma m plus zeta of m plus n. And um, the proof is, is very straightforward. You simply write from the definition the product of the two zeta values as a double sum. And this can be decomposed into three parts, one where the integer k is less than l, one where it's greater than l, and the final part where they're equal. And um, so this relation is also due to Euler. And in fact, you can easily imagine that this uh, kind of relation generalizes for, for all the multiple zeta values, if you just take into account the summations. And what it shows, in particular, is that if uh, z is defined to be the q vector space spanned by multiple zeta values, uh, then it's in fact an algebra. Okay, and um, what one expects, a, a very old folklore conjecture, is that the numbers 1, pi, and all the odd zeta values should be uh, algebraically independent of a q. And um, what's nice about the, this, this setup is if one wants to understand uh, polynomial relations between these numbers, then by uh, the fact that z is an algebra, this reduces to understanding linear relations between multiple zeta values. Um, so that begs the following question. What is uh, a basis for the multiple zeta values as, say, a vector space? And so the, the natural thing to do here is to try to write down a basis or a generating family. And so the obvious thing to do is to start with, say, the even zetas, then add in the, the odd zeta values, and then, in increasing depth, add in the, the multiple zetas of depth 2 and build up a basis like this. And for reasons that will become clear a bit later, the, the thing in, in depth 2 you would like would be to have uh, zetas in, in odd arguments only. 
But at this point, something um, terrible happens. We have the following identity, 28 zeta 3, 9 plus 150 zeta 5, 7 plus 168 zeta 7, 5 equals 5197 over 691 zeta of 12. And um, in fact, it turns out there's a whole family of, of exotic relations like this that somehow don't fit into the picture. So they, first of all, this completely scuppers your hope of constructing a nice basis. And secondly, it turns out that these exotic relations come from the existence of cusp forms for uh, SL2Z. So for every cusp form, um, you, get, uh, you get an exotic relation like this. This was done by Gangel, uh, Kanako, and Zagier. Um, so somehow the, the, the depth is, is pathological, and we must um, try to avoid uh, multiple zeta values in low depth, so to speak. So the way around this is the, is the first theorem, which is that every multiple zeta value of weight n is a Q linear combination of different family of multiple zeta values, zeta n1 up to nr, where ni equals 2 or 3 um, of the same weight. So this, um, this basis was conjectured by Michael Hoffman in 1997, I think. Um, and it gets around this problem of these, these nasty modular relations by um, having something in, in high depth. So the, the second theorem, which um, more or less explains why multiple zeta values uh, are important, and that's that the uh, periods of uh, mixed Tate motives of Z, so I'll explain what this means later, um, are in the ring of multiple zeta values in which you perhaps invert 2i pi. So it was known for quite a long time that um, multiple zeta values were examples of periods of mixed state motives. Um, but here the theorem says that all mixed state motives, in fact, correspond in some sense to multiple zeta values. Um, so this explains why they keep turning up in, in various branches of maths and physics. Um, so the, the proof of these theorem is uh, somehow Galois theoretic in nature. So um, to motivate this, let me just say that Ultimately, one would like to understand uh, the algebra of multiple zeta values over Q as a kind of, in inverted commas, Galois extension of transcendental numbers. We don't know they're transcendental, but that's what's expected. And so the group here won't be a finite group, of course. It'll be um, an infinite matrix group or a pro-algebraic group that I'll call GTR. And um, of course, this is completely, uh, completely meaningless. And it makes no sense to try and make a group act, on, act on, on numbers because we don't even know. It's not known if even zeta 5 is a rational number or not. So you can define a, a Galois action on zeta 5. You don't even know that it's not in the, in the base field. So the idea for, for getting around this and to actually have to reinstate such a thing, the idea of this talk is to um, replace the, the number. So instead of working with real numbers, I'm going to replace them with something a little bit more algebraic, and it'll, for now, it'll just be called, written with a, a little m subscript, uh, superscript. So this is what will be called a mativic multiple zeta value. Um, and these sort of more elaborate objects will have uh, the action of a certain group on them. 
And there will be a map called the period map, which enables you to recover the actual numbers from these, these uh, Mativic uh, objects. So the idea is that you can do Galois-type arguments on the, on the Mativic multiple zeta values. Then by applying the period, you deduce something about the real numbers. So now I should explain in what sense uh, the zeta values are, are periods. So let me just consider the example of, of zeta 2. And so if you want to uh, write zeta 2 as a period, you need uh, an integral representation. And uh, the one I'm going to use goes back to Leibniz showed that the in following integral is 0 less than or equal to t1, t2 less than or equal to 1, dt1 over 1 minus t1, dt2 over t2, um, is equal to zeta of 2. Um, so this is a, it's very straightforward to show this. You just um, do a expand 1 over 1 minus t1 as a geometric series and integrate term by term, and you get exactly the definition of, of zeta 2. Um, so when you speak of a period, you want to um, understand this as, as a pairing between a, a Duram cohomology class with something um, homological. So um, we need to uh, the Duram cohomology of something. And the underlying space uh, that we want to look at is m0, n plus 3, the moduli space of curves of genus three, uh, genus 0 with n plus 3 marked points. And this is very concretely just the product of n copies of p1 minus 0, 1 and infinity minus the diagonals. So for n equals 1, this is just uh, p1 minus 0, 1, and infinity. And for n equals 2, uh, let me draw a picture. So this is a, a picture of uh, M05. Oops, 0, 1, infinity. And um, so this differential form here, omega, um, is indeed a, a regular two form on M05. And um, let me define uh, x to be a set of points t1, t2, 0 less than or equal to t1, less than t2, less than or equal to 1, contained in the set of real points. Actually, I better not say that. <laughs> Let me just take the open, open syntax, contained in M05, real points. So it's this, uh, this little triangle here. And um, what you want to do is, is uh, consider, view this as a, as a Duram cohomology class and X as a, a relative homology class. Relative because it has a, a boundary, boundary contained in these divisors here. Um, but you run into a problem very quickly. So if you try to do this, uh, you get a problem, which is a seemingly uh, anodyne. But it's important because uh, X uh, meets the singularities of the differential form um, at two points, 0, 0, and 1, 1. And this means you can't write down something very naive to um, um, some, some sort of cohomology group that, that carries both omega and x. And the solution, the um, way around this problem, is to, to blow up the bad points. So let m05 bar 
um, be uh, the space obtained by blowing up at the points t comma t, where t is equal to 0, 1, and infinity. So on this picture, that means that I replace uh, each of these three points with a copy of P1. So a white copy here, a white copy here, and a red copy up here. And so after blowing up, um, what you find now is that you have 10 divisors. So this is the, the difference between M05 bar and M05 uh, is two sets of five divisors. So A is the union A is 1 to 5, AI numbered in some, some order. So the AR are the, are the, the red irreducible the red irreducible um, divisors, hyperplanes. And um, B, again numbered in any order, are the, the white ones. OK. So um, now what you want to do is, is uh, pull back the integral up to uh, M05 bar. So let omega tilde be the pullback of this form to M05 bar. A priori, it's defined on some, some open subset, but it turns out that it, has, uh, it requires no poles um, on B, and uh, its singularities are entirely contained in the red A divisors. And let X2 bar be the closure of the inverse image of X. So it's now a, now a pentagon. So it's this, this shaded, now the shaded pentagon here. And um, its boundary of this, this closed pentagon is contained in, in B. And now uh, all is good because uh, X2 bar no longer meets the singularities of the integral at all. So the effect of blowing up is, is precisely to move uh, the singularities of the differential form completely away from the, the domain of integration. So from, from an analytic point of view, it's completely unnecessary because the, the integral is, is convergent. But in, when one wants to write down the motive, this is absolutely crucial. So of course, uh, zeta 2 is still, uh, by changing variables, just the integral of uh, omega tilde along x2 bar. And so now we're going to define uh, M2 will therefore be a uh, second cohomology, H2, of M05 bar minus the A divisors, because that's where omega has singularities, and relative to the B divisors. And so this thing defines uh, a mixed uh, Tate motive. You can show that it's of Z. And so uh, one way to think about uh, what, this, what this is, is Vart realizations. So it has a, um, um, a Duram realization. So this is just the, uh, the Duram cohomology group, M05 bar minus A, B minus B intersection A. Um, and so this is something that can be calculated uh, explicitly with, with differential forms. And what you show is that um, the cohomology class, omega, omega tilde, defines an element in this, in this vector space. So this, this turns out to be a, a two-dimensional Q vector space, and you can write down a basis for it very explicitly. 
Likewise, there's a, um, a Betty realization, which would give me cohomology, but if I dualize, I get Betty homology. So this is ordinary um, singular homology of the complex points. And the way it's been constructed is that uh, the, the class, the, the, the pentagon X2 bar, because it has a boundary contained in, in B, it therefore defines a, a, a relative homology class in this group. Again, it's a, a two-dimensional uh, vector space. So this, uh, now this integral formula uh, tells you that um, zeta2 is uh, a period of this thing, uh, M2, because it's obtained by, by pairing a Duram differential form against some, some Betty cycle. And so now, what is, uh, what is the point of all this? So we're going to lift the number zeta2, which is just a real number, to um, the, the data, the triple, of this motive, um, the data of this uh, differential form, if you prefer the, the, the cohomology class in its Duran realization, and the relative homology cycle, x2 bar. So let me call this thing uh, zeta2 tilde. And of course, you can recover the number zeta2 from this because there's the period, the period of this thing is uh, given by the pairing between omega and x. It's just the integral of class omega against x, well-defined. And you get back zeta2. So there's no loss of, loss of information in replacing the number with this, um, uh, this, this, uh, this triple here. Okay, so what's the general uh, picture? In general, uh, you take a bunch of numbers, epsilon i in 0 and 1, and you define the integral i epsilon 1 epsilon n1 to be the integral over an n-dimensional simplex of dt1, t1 minus epsilon 1, dtn over tn minus epsilon n. And this thing, so let me call this form omega epsilon. And this thing converges if uh, epsilon 1 is 1 and epsilon n is naught. And now it's a, a, a simple calculation, uh, first due to Konsevich, I believe, that the multiple zeta value is just a, a special case of this integral. Um, well, in fact, it's, it's all, the, the, all the cases of this integral, where, where I write 1 naught to the power n1 minus 1 actually means the sequence 1 followed by a certain number of zeros. Of course. I just don't want to write endless commas everywhere. And so it turns out that this thing is a period of something very similar, of what I would call Mn, which is Hn of M0 n plus 3 bar, the deline mumford compactification of M0 n, minus a bunch of divisors in infinity relative to a bunch of <coughs> divisors at finite distance, in some sense, where... Um, where so B is the set of uh, the union of the boundary divisors of the M0N bar, which uh, meet uh, Xn bar. So again, Xn bar is, is what happens to the, the, the domain of integration after blowing up. Um, and A is the union of the boundary of, of all the other of all the other boundary divisors. Uh, 
Um, so this thing is, uh, was shown by Gonshov and, and Manin to define a mixed state motive over, over Z. And so in some sense, it's the universal mixed state motive which contains uh, all these integrals with periods. So with this, I can define um, zeta tilde n1 up to nr equals the triple of this universal motive n and the pullback of the differential form which cal calculates the multiple zeta value and then xn bar. So xn bar is always fixed in this story. You can, you can sort of drop it from the notation because it's, it's never going to move. It's only the differential form here that, that changes when I consider a different multiple zeta. Here, of course, n is the, the weight. Um, so now I need to say something about mixed state motives. So I've written down lots of examples of mixed state motives. Um, so let me note uh, MT of Z um, is the abelian uh, tensor uh, category of mixed state motives. Over Z. Um, so this uh, this thing has uh, is has been constructed by the work of an enormous number of people that I can't even begin to try and write down on a board. It's something that's um, very complicated to define and extremely abstract. So there's um, there's no intrinsic way of of understanding this. And indeed, if if uh, you take a, a, a motive, it's very difficult to show. It can be very difficult to show that it's that it's mixed state over Z. So this, um, um, this doesn't, doesn't help you very much. All we need to do, though, is um, understand um, its abstract properties. And the idea is that we have um, some abstract category, so a certain box in which we can construct lots of examples. But then we'll know the size of the box, and the hope is that you generate the whole category with the examples that you can actually write down, if you're lucky. Um, so all we need to know about this is that it has um, certain simple objects. So these are the, the bricks, the building blocks. Qn for each uh, integer, which are the tape motives. And um, then we need to know the glue between these blocks. And that's given by the x ones in this category. So the x1 of a q0 and a qn is isomorphic to q if n is greater than or equal to 3 and odd and is 0 in all other cases. And all the higher x groups uh, vanish. So there's a, a better way to, to think about this is in terms of um, Tanakian categories. So I should say that this calculation of the X is, is probably the, the, the deepest thing um, that, that one needs to use. And these dimensions come from Borel's calculation of the rank of the algebraic K theory of Q, of stretching with Q. So that's where that's where these dimensions come from. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, this is in fact a Tanakian category, um, and it has a canonical fiber functor, which um, to any mixed state motive associates its Duran realization 
which as we saw in the examples is just some uh, vector space, finite dimensional vector space over Q. And so um, by the general theory, MTZ can be thought of as equivalent to the finite dimensional representations of a certain group, GDR. And what we know about this group, GDR, is that uh, it's isomorphic to a semi-direct product of another group, UDR, where UDR is a pro-unipotent affine group scheme over Q. And um, this can be described uh, very concretely by its Lie algebra. So the action of GM on uh, UDRAM gives a grading to its Lie algebra. And its uh, graded uh, Lie algebra is uh, non-canonically isomorphic to uh, the free Lie algebra uh, on some generators, which I'll call sigma 2i plus 1 in, uh, in degree. So I want to take negative degrees here. 2i plus 1 for i greater than or equal to 1. So there, this comes from the, 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 the dictionary, the sort of standard dictionary um, for Tanakian categories. The, the freeness of the Lie algebra corresponds to the vanishing of the x to 2s. And the generators in each odd degree come from uh, the x to 1s. So as we'll see in a minute, um, what I really want to consider uh, are the functions on, on this group. So the functions on, on, on this thing form a, a Hopf algebra. Um, and let me denote it by A. So let A be the graded ring of functions on U Duran. And so it's something very concrete. It's isomorphic to uh, the free associative non-commutative algebra generated by one generator f 2i plus 1 in every odd degree so this is a, a Hopf algebra we don't need to know anything about it except um, its structure as a vector space in fact for now so um, very concretely you can write down a, a basis for this thing so the vector space basis of A is just uh, given by the set of words, including the empty word, set of words in the letters of this alphabet. OK, so th this is just uh, something um, very straightforward. And it's an exercise that to compute the dimensions in each degree of such a thing. So the dimension of a Q of A n T T n, the generating series of the dimensions. So you're counting the number of words of a fixed degree in non-commutative words in, in these letters. Um, so that's given by uh, this formula. And a straightforward calculation on this uh, series gives the answer 1 minus t squared over 1 minus t squared minus t cubed. And so this is the first uh, hint that, this, um, that this, this Hoffman basis I mentioned in Theorem 1 is playing a role because we see that the 2 and 3 appears out of nowhere for the, for the first time. So all we, all we need to know about um, the cat this, this category is that it, it exists. We have objects in it, and 
and really the most important fact is this this bound for the the bound for the the, the size of the space of objects or bound for the <coughs> space of functions on the uh, the Tanaka group so now let me um, uh, come to Mativic multiple zeta values. multiple zeta values. Um, so the mativic multiple zeta values are going to be obtained by first lifting these numbers to their mativic counterparts, these zeta tildes that I wrote down here. So we replace the numbers with um, something more complicated. And then I want to quotient, take the quotient by uh, certain relations called the, the mativic relation. Um, so let me consider such a relation. Let me take a homogeneous linear combination of weight n um, so zeta tilde so it's just a, a formal linear combination at this stage of some uh, some some indices some index sets. So here, so AI are going to be rational numbers. So I consider relations of this of this type, and um, in fact, it's it's uh, more or less obvious that this corresponds it has a mativic version. So you can replace this by um, a single integral of a certain differential form, omega, over the same um, simplex as before. And that's clear because the um, integration is, is obviously additive in the differential form. So here, omega, I can just, in the notation I had before, it's going to be just a sum ai of the omega tildes uh, of the, the corresponding integrals for each of these. So just saying that, it, that, that integration is linear in the differential form. So that's obvious. And of course, so the, the period of this, this single object, um, the period of this thing, um, gives me back this linear relation. period gives me uh, the linear combination on actual zeta values. Okay, and so now the key point is that, um, that these things, uh, this MN is a mixed tape motive of a, of a Z. Um, omega tilde is in its Durham realization. And so now we have an, an action of this of this group on uh, on the Durham realization M N, and that allows us to move this differential form around. So key point is M N has sorry M N Durham has a in particular U Durham action. And so we had this this uh, this class, omega um, tilde. And I apologize. I, I'm very lazy putting square brackets around classes. But, uh, we had this this cohomology class in this in this uh, Duram cohomology group. And so um, um, we can send this thing. So for net to an every element in this group will. will map uh, this differential form, if you like, to a, uh, to a different one. Um, so what are the mativic relations? Um, so I will say that such a linear combination is equivalent to zero, so as a mativic relation, if the period of the triple MN G omega tilde xn bar is zero for all G in U Duram. 
So uh, in the particular case when G is the, the, the trivial element, uh, this says that the, the period itself is zero, so that means just that this, this linear relation I is zero. Um, so what is a metric relation? A metric relation is a relation between multiple zeta values that is true, and that is true under all uh, its Galois translates. All its Galois conjugates also have to be true identities. Um, so this is just a very heavy-handed way of saying that you just consider the associated function on, on u Duran. Um, so that's what a, a, a motivic relation is. Oh, I better keep that. <laughs> Obviously, in an ideal world, you wouldn't need to bother doing this. Um, conjecturally, of course, uh, the relations are motivic if and only if they're, they're just true in the first place. You don't need to. But this is a, a much stronger condition. Um, this just enables us to get around these transcendence conjectures. Um, so now, having defined uh, motivic relations between these generators, I can say that, that H be the Q vector space spanned by these lifted multiple zeta values over Q and quotienting, quotiented by the set of motivic relations, the idea of motivic relations. And let me write, at long last, zeta motivic of N is the uh, equivalence class, the image of um, zeta tilde N uh, in H. So it's relatively easy to show that H is, uh, is graded, graded by the weight, and um, it's an algebra. So the product of two such integrals is, is the same type of integral. And furthermore, um, it's been set up in such a way that there is a period map from H to real numbers. And what it does is it takes the motivic multiple zeta value and sends it to the actual multiple zeta value. Okay, so, so what? We haven't really uh, gained anything at this stage. But the, the following claim that, that I can't prove completely um, in the time is that um, H is, in fact, uh, closed under u Duran action. So we've reinstated this, this, um, this cattle action. And in fact, so this is the key point, which is kind of miraculous, that we can in fact compute something about this action. So we can't compute everything. Um, that would be too much to ask. But we can compute some partial information about this, about this uh, Galois action. Okay, so now um, <coughs> let me state the, uh, the main theorem. And so the main theorem is that the uh, elements uh, zeta motivic N1, NR, for Ni equals 2 or 3, um, are linear, are linearly independent elements of H. They're linearly independent over Q. <coughs> so now let me deduce. Ah, sorry. Let me deduce the, the theorems of the introduction from from this theorem. So, um, so this, this theorem gives you a, a lower bound for the, the size of this, this uh, algebra H. Uh, now I want um, an upper bound. And that comes from the, what we know about mixed state motives. So let me write now um, H empty plus equals A 
tensor. So A is the functions on u de ram. And then I, I need to add something that corresponds to zeta 2. So let me tensor with QF2. So F2 is a new element in degree 2, which corresponds to zeta nativic 2. So in some sense, this is the, uh, the algebra of motivic periods of all possible mixed state motives, which are real and, and satisfy um, another condition. Um, and um, what you can show is that there exists, again, a non-canonical, unfortunately, uh, embedding from H. So these are the, the motives that I've written down explicitly, the multiple zeta motives, embeds into HMT plus. Okay, so let me call uh, let me call star these Hoffman elements and let H two three be the the span the the sub q vector space of H spanned by the element star. And so what we have is the, um, the algebra of all motivic multiple zeta values. It certainly contains the algebra, uh, sorry, the, the vector space of motivic multiple zeta values of this particular type. And um, it's contained in this sort of space of motivic periods of, of all mixed state motives in some sense. So we've wedged H between two different spaces. Then the, um, the main theorem implies that the dimension in degree N of H23 is exactly equal to the number of ways of writing uh, the weight N as a sum of indices Ni where Ni equals 2 or 3. So that's just precisely saying that these elements are linear independent. Um, and now, so um, now I want to calculate the dimension of HMT plus. So the dimension of H, oops, HMT plus in degree N, um, well, let me take the generating series. Of course, the generating series with dimensions. Well, since it's a um, H is, is a tensor product, it's easy from this formula. It's just the product of this generating series, 1 minus t squared over 1 minus t squared minus t cubed times the generating series for QF2, which is which has a single generating degree 2. And these things cancel. And uh, so what you deduce is that... Um, of course, this is the generating series for this set of numbers. And this implies that the dimension of uh, Hn23 is equal to the dimension of Hmt plus. OK, so what we have is. Um, what we deduce is that uh, H23 is, in fact, equal to H, which is, in fact, equal to HMT plus. <coughs> um, so let's look at the, the first equality. What does the first equality tell us? Well, the first equality tells us that, here, that the vector space of all motivic multiple zeta values is the same as the vector space of spanned by the, these Hoffman motivic multiple zeta values. So in particular, every motivic multiple zeta value is a linear combination of, of these uh, elements here. So one implies that the elements star are a basis for H. And um, since I can write any motivic multiple zeta value as a linear combination of these ones, I can then apply the period map and then uh, that immediately gives theorem 1, which is the corresponding statement on, on actual multiple zeta values. Then uh, the equality 2, what does it 2 tell us? 2 tells us that the um, motivic multiple zeta values are um, 
span all the motivic periods of, of mixed state motives. So it says that um, 2 implies that the MN uh, generate uh, the category MTZ. And in fact, you can prove something ever so slightly more specific. The slogan here is that the motivic fundamental group of M04, which is P1 minus 0, 1 infinity, so this is a slightly different setting. I chose to write the talk in, in a different language. Um, but but uh, this thing somehow is a, a, a sub-object sub of, of the, the, the limit of all these MNs as being smaller. Um, so this this is an, 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 an end object in the cat. Yes. Which is 2. Which is 2. 2 implies this statement. Sorry. What is 2? 2 is this equality here, the h equals h mt plus. Sorry, so 1, one refers to this. Equality in two refers to this equality. Um, and so this thing, uh, the slightly more specific statement, this thing generates MTZ. Uh, and this thing was, was called, was known as the uh, dolini hara conjecture. I'm not entirely sure um, what the history of the terminology is. Um, but in any case, when you apply the period map, it says that the, the periods of, of all mixed state motives are uh, multiple zeta values. So this gives uh, theorem 2 that I stated at the beginning. Again, by applying period map. Um, so... so that's the heart of everything is main field. Yeah, the heart of the main theorem implies, implies the Hoffman basis conjecture and, and, and this conjecture at the same time. So all you have to do is prove... Uh, this, this seemingly simpler statement, you, you pick up everything. <coughs> um, so I should just say as well, um, so Deline, I think in 2010, uh, proved uh, analogous results uh, in a slightly different setting for um, the projective line minus certain roots of unity, where uh, n equals 2, 3, 4, 6, or 8. Um, and I should say that these are precisely the cases where the, the depth filtration is not pathological. These are exactly the cases where you don't have these modular forms that come and mess everything up. So somehow it, it's, it's a kind of a different story in, in just these cases. Um, it's rather mysterious, in fact, why things should be like that. Um, so now let me give a, a very quick idea of, of the proof of this, um, of the theorem, just in, in, uh, in two lines. So the first idea um, is that the depth filtration is, is bad. The good filtration is, in fact, given by the number of threes. Um, and goodness, I have no idea why. I mean, it's just the way it turns out. But the hardest thing in proving, uh, proving this theorem was, was believing it to be true in the first place. I mean, not many people took it seriously. Well, theorem 1 in any case. Um, and so uh, and you immediately run into a problem when you do your induction. Uh, already with a single 3, you get a statement you can't prove. Um, so you called on, on Don Zagie, and he proved that... Um, this uh, special family of, base of Hoffman elements with a single three um, is equal to twice, let me give the formula, it's rather incredible, r from 1 to a plus b plus 1 minus 1 to the r 2r to a plus 2 minus 1 minus 2 to the minus 2r 2r 2b plus 1 times zeta 2r plus 1, and then times zeta 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, where the number of 2s is such that the, the weights work out, a plus b plus 1, and so on. Um, so the proof of this theorem is, this is a completely elementary statement, um, and it's, the proof is, is, is analytic. It it's, uh, doesn't use anything to do with motives or anything like that. Um, but it's surprisingly tricky, and... Um, 
it, it's amazingly, uh, amazingly complicated. Um, so then, um, yeah, so I should say that the idea of the proof now um, uses in some uh, essential way um, the um, arithmetic. So this is the proof of the main theorem now. Uses the arithmetic of, of some of these coefficients. So it's, re it's really an arithmetic in, in nature. So these, these coefficients here. So the idea is is um, is very simple. You you want to check that these elements are linearly independent, and so you want to write down uh, a, a smallest possible relation. Um, so with the minimum number of threes and minimum weight, you then want to compute the, the Galois action to get something of, of lower um, weight and lower number of threes and, and get a contradiction. And the problem, there are two problems here. The first problem is that when you compute the Galois action, um, well, you can't really. You only get some partial information. So you have to bigrade, work in an associated bigrade to, to cut out all the junk. And the second problem when you try to compute this is that you get some very complicated linear combinations of precisely these coefficients. And you're sort of in trouble. But, um, and so you have to show that some big matrix with linear combinations of these coefficients ha is invertible. And the thing that saves the day is the fact that these coefficients have remarkable two-adic, the, the, the two-adic valuation have some remarkable properties. And you compute the, the, two, the determinant of this matrix two-adically and show that it's invertible. And then the, uh, the induction goes through. So um, in principle, the idea is very simple, but in practice, it's, it's extremely fiddly. Um, I was hoping to have time in the final minute. I could better stop. I was hoping to write down how, how this, this Galois action looks on these Michaelic multiple zeta values. It's kind of a nice combinatorial formula. Um, instead, I'll skip that. I'll just go back to what I said at the beginning about a Galois theory. Um, so what you can do, once you have this setup of Mathivic multiple zeta, is you can play some amusing games, um, like sort of Galois descent, like you would do for ordinary Galois theory. And so you can think of H as an extension of the algebra spanned by zeta 2. And you can try and do sort of descent arguments. And um, here's a, a very silly example. If you look at zeta Mathivic 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3. Uh, with n, n copies of 1, 3s. Then, in fact, you can show that it has trivial um, Euler-Ram action. So had I written down the formula, we could have done this. Um, and so what you deduce from this without doing any work at all is that zeta 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3 is, in fact, in this, this uh, invariant subspace. And because we know the weight, and then by taking the period, you can show that zeta 1, 3, 1, 3 is, in fact, a um, certain power of pi. Time, times q. And so it shows that these kind of Galois arguments are, are fun. You can um, deduce uh, relations sort of Galois theoretically. This particular identity was, in fact, a conjecture of, of Zagier's uh, in the early days of multiple zeta values. And it was proved by Broadhurst, who gave the, the exact coefficient, by a very clever argument using hypergeometric theory. So it's kind of amusing that you can prove these identities um, just by using this group action. Um, it almost comes for free. Problem is, of course, no, that's a, there's no way, to my knowledge, of getting, of getting this coefficient. For now. So I better stop there.